Hi, it's the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, September 10th. We're continuing to watch Tropical Storm France seen in the western Gulf of Mexico, which has steadily become better organized since yesterday. Top winds now about 65 miles per hour, according to the National Hurricane Center, about to make its move northeastward towards the central or southeastern Louisiana coastline over the next 24 to 36 hours. Arrival expected sometime on Wednesday afternoon or evening. If we take a zoomed in view of the storm here, since yesterday, we've really seen the circulation consolidate and become tightly wrapped relative to the loose and broad structure that it had yesterday. What happened was during the day, it was able to quickly intensify for the first few hours of the afternoon, and then it's gone through a brief pause in the intensification process during the overnight hours due to some dry air left over from the old cold front that had injected some cool dry air down into the western gulf that had wrapped around and kind of gotten into the core a little bit so we've seen a bit of a consolidation phase where the storm has not been quickly picking up strength and you can see a little bit of that evidence of the dry air kind of getting in there and eating the western part of the inner core. The radar picture out of Brownsville, Texas also gives you the sense that while there's a little bit of an inner core ring right there, there is some dry air that continues to erode deep thunderstorms on the western side. But that is progressively getting mixed out and we're likely to see continuing intensification probably a little more quickly today and tonight than we saw during the overnight hours last night. This is a radar data picture out of the Hurricane Research Division, courtesy of them, showing a composite of the 1,600-foot winds from the NOAA aircraft that has been flying through the storm this morning, showing that the inner core wind field has become much tighter since yesterday, stronger on the eastern side, which is expected. That's where the max winds of 60 plus miles per hour are being measured, and in general, seeing this compact ring of max wind developing near the storm center is an indication that a true inner core is forming and that is likely to result in Francine becoming a hurricane during the next 24 hours. Now the important aspect of the intensity forecast here is going to be wind shear. As we discussed yesterday, there are strong westerlies over the southern U.S. right now. So on the water vapor satellite animation, you'll see these upper level cirrus streaming from left to right on your screen. And you can see that happening even over areas like Corpus Christi. So you can see entering stage left here, all that upper level flow. Francine is currently in an environment where it's not being impacted by that shear, but all it has to do is move northward a little bit. And overnight tonight, it's going to start encountering much more hostile conditions than it's currently residing in. That doesn't mean it will immediately stop intensifying tonight. It will likely continue intensifying into Wednesday, but eventually that intensification will be capped, which is the good news. The bad news is it will not have enough time to weaken substantially prior to moving inland. So we're expecting intensification to probably slow down in the final hours before landfall during this last bit of its journey right in here but it will likely be near or just below its lifetime peak intensity prior to crossing the coastline. But this is unlikely at this point to become a major hurricane of Category 3 plus strength, but it will still be a Category 1 or 2 hurricane based on current expectations. That means winds between 75 and 110 miles per hour. Right now, the National Hurricane Center forecasting a peak of 90 to 100. So that's kind of the situation that we're dealing with as this moves northeastward toward the central or southeastern Louisiana coastline. And this makes sense given the structure that we're seeing evolve today in the inner core, which is following the general expectation of high resolution model guidance, such as the HAFS A model from NOAA, which expected an inner core to be forming at around this time when it's southeast of the Rio Grande Valley, as we see here on the model. And we'll see that structure continue with a dark green ring indicating deep moisture and thunderstorms the formative eye wall that you expect out of a hurricane-like structure, continuing through tonight and into the early hours of tomorrow morning. Now you'll notice that as soon as we get into the overnight hours, there's some brown color showing up on the southwestern side of the circulation. Most of the green starts becoming a little more asymmetric toward the northeast side. The inner core remains here, but you can see the impact of that shear starting to put asymmetries into the structure. And as we get toward the coastline, Eventually, we see a, a little more erosion of the inner core. It stays intact, but the central pressure value, you'll notice, stops falling at some point. So it's falling, falling, falling until about this point, and during the final 6 to 12 hours before landfall, it's steady intensity and doesn't intensify very much 
due to the impact of that high shear, which is expected to be about 30 knots at this point. But this would be a bona fide hurricane moving into the Louisiana coastline. Hafs B, similar outcome here, strengthening overnight. And then in the morning, you start to see erosion of the southern eye wall. Most of the dark green is on the northeast side due to the southwesterly wind shear. And as this comes toward the coast, it's actually weakening a little bit. So on this model, we see a little bit of a decrease in the intensity in the final hours. The other model had a steady or flat intensity leading up to landfall. But in both cases, a hurricane hits the coastline. As far as the track goes, we have seen a little bit of a shift to the east since yesterday. This is the current set of deterministic model guidance that the National Hurricane Center is by and large looking at. And you can see the cluster of most solutions centered near or east of Vermilion Bay. If you compare that to yesterday afternoon's tracks, you can see that there is a concentration west of Vermilion Bay. And why did we see this shift towards the east? Well, if you look at this guidance from yesterday, and look at where it was forecasted to track in the short term southeast of the Rio Grande Valley, you can see that track there. Francine is actually located roughly here based on aircraft reconnaissance data this morning. So because of that broad system consolidating into a slightly different location this morning relative to expectation, that has shifted the entire track a little bit to the east. And so that's why we see this set of guidance today. I tell you that because we're unlikely to see major changes from this point forward. Slight nudges and uncertainties in the landfall location are, of course, always possible. But now that the storm has a defined spot, guidance is going to be much better. And so yesterday's ended up correcting a little bit because of where Francine is this morning. But from this point forward, we're unlikely to see major shifts as the steering flow is rather straightforward here. But this does increase risks to southeastern Louisiana as higher winds could move close to the New Orleans metro area as well as the Mississippi coastline and greater inland flooding threats for southeastern Louisiana and Mississippi as well with an increase in storm surge threats potentially extending towards Mobile Bay. So that's kind of the impact of this little shift eastward in the last 24 hours. This is the National Hurricane Center forecast track showing that little shift now a little east of Vermilion Bay versus west yesterday. You can see a hurricane warning still out for most of southern Louisiana. The western part of this might get chopped off later if this eastward shift holds. And tropical storm warnings for Mississippi and the New Orleans and Lake Pontchartrain area. We see warnings also out for extreme south Texas and northeastern Mexico as the storm is nearby, but we haven't been seeing particularly strong winds and observations there yet this morning from what I could see. Storm surge values, one of the big concerns here in the Louisiana coastline, up to 10 feet in this red area in central and southeastern Louisiana. And again, water level rise is now possible as far east as Mobile Bay due to that slide eastward in the track. This is the wind probability swath showing that the 50-50 line in brown here encompasses most of the southern Louisiana coastline. So tropical storm force winds of 40 miles per hour or stronger are very possible across most of the state coastline and extending into Mississippi now as well with elevated possibilities as far east as Alabama. Odds have decreased for southeastern Texas again due to that eastward slide in the landfall location. Flash flood risk remains at moderate in southeastern Louisiana and a corridor of elevated risk extends well inland as the storm will track northward and bring moisture and heavy rains along with it. And there's also a slight risk for tornadoes along the north Gulf Coast near and east of Francine Center as spiral bands rotate onto the coastline. And I would note that bands are already raking the coastline with heavy rains and could bring that tornado risk in advance of the storm core, which is still well to the southwest, but we are seeing heavy weather in advance of the landfall. So be mindful of that as you're finalizing preparations. Please be safe and ensure you're prepared for a likely hurricane Francine making landfall in Louisiana sometime on Wednesday afternoon or evening. That'll be it for now. Thanks for watching.